Hey, what's up everyone? So welcome back. So if you're still on the fence about using your mobile phone for photography instead of an actual camera, this video is for you. <laughs> See, I constantly get asked which phone I use or how I manage to take photos like these. Um, and the answer is simple. It's not about the phone or the camera you use. It's all about how you use it. I know it's a bit of a cliche answer, but it is the truth. I mean, give me a Samsung S8 or an iPhone 10, and I'll still manage to take some bangers out of them. And that's because you have to follow some rules. And that's why I made this video with my top 12 tips, which hopefully will help you take your photos to the next level. So tip number one, make sure you switch to raw mode. So you can basically shoot with the least amount of processing. Normally, if you shoot in regular JPEG mode, the raw sensor data will be processed by the ISP, the imaging signal processor. And basically what it does is it will boost your saturation, your contrast, and it will also increase the sharpness as well as make your shadows brighter and your highlights less bright, which when you put it all together, it can give you a very artificial look, uh, a very processed look. Plus, if you wanted to edit the same JPEG photo, you would have a harder time since it lacks all that extra info that a raw DNG file has. So most phones nowadays will allow you to shoot in raw. It's just a matter of going in your settings and turning that option on. Which leads us to tip number two, editing. Now, why did I tell you to switch to shooting in raw? That's because it allows you to edit your photos afterwards and whether you like it or not, I highly recommend you do so. See, 99% of all the photos you see out there in magazines, on Instagram, on Facebook, all these photos that you see and go, wow, I wish I had that camera. Well, they're all edited. So let's get it out of the way. You can't have your cake and eat it. Start learning the basics of editing. I promise you it's not that hard and it's pretty empowering actually. There are many ways, many different ways to edit your photos and many softwares ranging from the free and basic ones that, that still do the job like Snapseed to more advanced but paid for softwares like Adobe Lightroom. I have a couple of videos on the subject of editing your raw files so you're more than welcome to go and watch them but there are literally thousands if not millions of tutorials here on YouTube where you can see how to edit your photos. Again, take it from me, chances are that the look you're after is impossible to get straight out of the camera. Now, tip number three is probably the most important out of all of them, composition. This could be a series of videos on its own and I will probably make more videos on the subject in the future. See, the difference between a meh shot and a stunning shot nine times out of 10 is due to the composition not because it was taken on the phone instead of a camera. When we talk about composition, there are so many rules that make for a pleasing image. So next time you get your camera phone out, give it a second and try thinking outside of the box. Try stopping yourself from shooting your subject straight on at eye level. I'll give you a few examples of uh, compositions. Shooting from above is a good way to isolate your subject and give it a different perspective. Shooting from below, by doing completely the opposite, so shooting upwards, you can really show off architecture and buildings, especially if you're shooting in wide angle. Negative space, and that's probably one of my favorite types of composition. The idea behind it is to isolate a subject by including a lot of empty space around it to highlight your subject even further. Contrast, so you can play with adding contrast in your photos. For example, highlights and shadows, so all together, mixed together, and that's always a winner. Symmetry, that's probably one of the most classic type of compositions out there because it just works. It divides the photo in different parts and really makes for an interesting shot. Another one is leading lines. Again, another classic where you want to direct the viewer's eyes to a certain part of your photo by having leading lines. Like I said earlier, there's so many different types of composition rules that you can use. So definitely look it up online, even if it's purely for inspiration. But again, next time you're out taking photos, try to make it more interesting by experimenting with a different angle or different framing. You'll really surprise yourself. Tip number four, try shooting in manual mode. So most phones nowadays have a first party camera app that allows you to shoot in manual. If you don't have one, you can always download a third party app. I've said it before, there's nothing wrong shooting in automatic, and I'll say it again, but you have to understand and you have to realize that when you take photos in automatic, you're leaving the phone in charge of what your photo is gonna look like. You're basically leaving the creative aspect on the table. 
By shooting in manual, you're in full control of the end result. If it does sound daunting, I have made a full tutorial on what most manual options do and how they work, so I'll refer you to that, but trust me, once you've gone into manual, you won't go back. Tip number five, control your ISO. Now, if you're already shooting in manual, you probably know what ISO is, and in a nutshell, it's the sensor's sensitivity to light, which will basically make your photo brighter or darker. That is probably one of the most important settings that you can play with on your phone, and more often than not, is what makes or breaks your photo. And in fact, that's the reason why a lot of people are put off taking photos on their phones, because they end up looking fuzzy or noisy and lacking in detail. So if you leave the camera in automatic, what it might do, it might want to crank up the ISO, and that's the issue. On mobile phones, you see, you really want to stay as close to the, best, the, to the base ISO as possible in any scenario. Anything over 5 or 600 ISO will majorly degrade the quality, so stick to a low ISO. Tip number six, lighting. It's very, very important. Always try judging how much light you need for a specific shot. Too much light can be equally as bad as not enough light. Sometimes it's just a matter of looking for a different angle or scouting for a different location. In this shot, I'll put it on the screen now, for example, um, I wanted to shoot the building in the background, but the foreground was really, really dark. So I walked up the street and I found a break between the buildings on the side that let the sun through to the other side of the street. Then I waited for a subject to enter the frame and I took the shot. So my next tip is to expose for the highlights. And this is very important when it comes to mobile phone photography because very often you'll hear people who take photos with uh, their DSLR, the mirrorless cameras, saying you should expose for the shadows so you can recover your highlights in post. For mobile phones though, I highly suggest you do the opposite. Make sure you expose your photos with the highlights in mind. From experience, it'll be much easier to recover the shadows than clipped highlights. To help you doing so, you can also use what's called a histogram. I'll pop a picture of what it actually looks like on the screen. If your app offers the option, make sure to enable it. It's a lifesaver. Tip number eight, save custom settings. Now, not all phones offer this option, but quite a few of them do. If you have the option to create custom settings or save previously used settings, this will save you a ton of time. And sometimes it might be the difference between getting a shot or missing it altogether. I'll give you a quick example. So on my Sony Xperia 1 Mark V, I've created a custom setting that allows me within like a couple of clicks to enable burst mode. So let's say I'm shooting, I don't know, a building and all of a sudden I see a sort of moving subject that catches my eye. I can rapidly switch all my settings to burst mode and be able to take up to 30 photos per second, making sure that I capture the subject and it is pin sharp. That's literally a lifesaver. So tip number nine, use different focal lengths and orientations. Right, I'm so guilty of this. More often than not, I'll take a photo and when it comes to editing it afterwards, I wish it had been taken in landscape instead of portrait or vice versa. So to avoid a headache later, if possible, try taking your photos in both orientations, so portrait and landscape, just to cover your back. Not only that, but given that we shoot with mobile phones, we have the massive advantage of not having to swap lenses all the time. And that's a massive bonus against regular cameras. Use that to your advantage, and when you've taken your photo, see if taking a wide angle or a telephoto shot would work better. You'll be surprised. So at number 10, accessories. So I made a video about a couple of months ago now about the accessories that I use with my phone, so feel free to go and watch it, and all the links are in the description. But it's very important. If you really want to get serious about the hobby, at some point you will need to experiment with filters, depending obviously on the type of shot that you want to go for. But even a tripod is a must, at least for me, in a lot of cases. Accessories are not essential per se, but they will definitely open up the possibilities of what you can achieve with your phone. Next tip, inspiration. Right, so there's nothing wrong with getting inspiration from others. That's the reason why I started the Instagram features in the first place, to inspire one another. And personally, I'm always on the lookout for new things to play with, experiment with. And as a matter of fact, I was browsing Instagram the other day, as you do, <laughs> And I found someone taking photos using one of those um, converted mirrorless cameras that basically allows you to capture infrared light. And I was absolutely shocked at what the results were. So I went out and I tried to give it a go, but with a phone. And that's what I ended up with. What do you guys think? It just goes to show that it's impossible to run out of ideas in this day and age. Just browse, have a look around, and you might see someone using a different technique, a different angle or shooting style. 
And that's what photography is all about at the end of the day. And that leads us to the last tip. Tip number 12, practice. I can't say enough guys, but practice makes you better. If you want to get better at something, there's no magic trick or magic recipe. Keep going out there, take dozens or hundreds of photos, experiment, use all the tips that I've given you and enjoy the hobby. Have fun taking photos. There's no excuse these days. It's not like you have to, to buy expensive rolls of films and wait uh, you know, days for your photos to be printed. You literally can take thousands of photos and delete them if you're not happy with the results. But I promise you, the more you do it, the better the results you'll get and the more you'll learn in, by doing so. Anyway guys, that's about all for this video. Make sure to keep tagging your photos on Instagram when you upload them with the hashtag UpsideLens. And in the next video, I might do another feature. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so. But again, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.